Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to do the Dragon Scale Tumbler with the UV epoxy and a UV light. So all you need to do is you need to make sure that you have the actual UV epoxy and the UV light to do these. Um, it's pretty simple. I have these chameleon powders. Glitzy Girl sells similar powders to this. I don't remember where I got them, so I can't tell you where they're from. So you just put some of the powder into a measuring cup. And then you're going to take your UV resin. You want to keep it away from your UV light or else it'll cure in the bottle. And also your mixing cup, you can reuse it, but again, you want to keep it away from your UV light so that it doesn't cure it into the mixing cup. So that's why I'm holding it back here behind the box. Um, you can get this from um, Amazon. It's just the Miracle Coo UV resin. So just go ahead and mix in your UV resin with your chameleon powder. And you're going to make sure that you have a silicone brush available. Um, the silicone brush is going to help you smear it across your cup a lot easier. You're also going to want a cup of soapy water just like this and then a straw. I just have this little flimsy straw that I got out of a box. So you're gonna want that ready. I use Dawn dish soap um, to make my bubbles. So all you're gonna do, the UV resin doesn't really smear, or like it doesn't drip down the cup as long as you don't use a lot in that area. You're gonna go down it with your silicone brush and get it into the area that you want. You wanna do this in sections because the bubbles are super messy. You also wanna make sure that you have a towel or something underneath it, because again, it's super messy. It's gonna get everywhere. So you just go on and you smear in with your silicone brush, your UV resin where you want it and how you want it. I just do it in like strips type situation. I take it with my silicone brush and I drag it down so that it is all ready to go. Again, do it in sections so that it doesn't drip. Um, you don't want the drippage because it'll show once it cures with your light. So after you get it onto your cup in the way that you want to do it in whatever color you choose, this one's just like a green color. You go ahead and you put your mixing cup behind something. So again, so it doesn't cure with anything. I'm gonna wipe off my brush, so, so make sure that it's an old towel because I'm gonna use this again to move around my bubbles. So I'm going to be into the frame just long enough to do the bubbles. So make sure that your brush is in your water so that you can move your bubbles without popping them. The bigger bubbles give you the bigger scales. The smaller bubbles are gonna give you smaller scales. So I'm gonna show you. So it's just like blowing bubbles into your milk when you were a kid. You're doing the same thing. So then you set that aside and immediately before your bubbles can pop, start hitting it with the UV. So I set it for 90 seconds and I kind of go up and down the cup a little bit to start getting it to cure before all my bubbles pop completely. And then I'll hold it into one spot. And you can move around your bubbles once they're on the cup if they start to fall off with the same sponge that you had dipped into your cup. So once you hit it with the UV light is when it's gonna start to cure.
This is also why I kind of go down the cup a little bit to get it to cure and start curing in some places because the bubbles are going to start popping. So you want to make sure that you've got that the bubble mark into your epoxy, your UV resin. You want to make sure that you have a handheld UV so that you can detach the bottom or either buy the one like this one without a bottom so that you can hold it above your cup. So it's pretty much cured at this point and you should be able to touch it. As long as you touch it and it doesn't like move under your finger, then it's cured. So mine is cured. Okay, so this is where you can take another um, towel or something like that and just get off the excess bubbles and wipe down the sides where you're going to go to next with the UV epoxy. So that's the first layer. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish up this cup and then I will be back to show you the finished product and then we'll go ahead with how to do the claws and the eyes and I'll go over that with you guys then. Okay, so here's my finished cup. I've got all the sides done. I do layer over each side as I go to the next section so it's nice and even. So I made sure to get it all done. You're gonna get some big bubbles, some little bubbles. It's all in just what you like. Um, honestly, I think it looks cool with the different um, scaly looks to it with the big bubbles and the little bubbles. I did make sure to get my butt. It is going to feel sticky to you. That's from the UV resin. So, but there it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prep for the eyes and the claws and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the molds for the eyes and the claws. You can get them with Glitzy Girl Glitter. Um, I can pin them down in my description um, as soon as I'm done with the video. So these are the molds that you're going to get. And there's a few different ways that you can do them. Um, so you can pick different colors than you chose for the cup itself. So I think I'm going to go with this purple here so that it stands off the cup more. You can mix the colors as well if you want. Um, to where you do different colors into the mold. I always just do the whole mold, whatever color I choose, and then I take paint and I paint in the eyes, the white and the green, when it's on the cup. So the thing with the molds is you wanna make sure that you pull the molds from, um, you wanna pull the epoxy from the molds before they set completely because you want it to be able to mold to your cup. So I still, I pull it when it's a little bendable still um, before it completely sets. So that way I can super glue it to the cup before it's completely set and I can't bend it at all. It just makes it easier. It's just a little trick that I do. I think people do it differently. It's just how I found it to be easier to attach the eyes and the claws to the cups themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get these molds filled with this color and then I will be back. Okay, so I have the molds coated. So what I do is I completely cover the molds in the color that I want. I actually traded up the um, claws for this uh, copper color that I have because I want it different than the eyes. So it's like a reddish copper. So when I'm doing the claws, I kind of spread it apart like I am and then I take my little brush and I just go into it gently to get all the nooks and crannies of the mold to make sure that everything's completely covered. I just kind of dab it in there. And then with this one, you had seen me start it. I just dab it along the ridges to make sure that I get it all in those nooks and crannies there. And I make sure that the whole mold is covered. I even do the eyes even though I paint them later, but so at this point, once you have your mold color covered in the color that you want, you're going to set those aside and you're going to mix up your epoxy. So I am, of course, using the A and B of the fast set. So I'm going to measure those out. I'm actually going to measure out 30 ml of both just because I would rather have too much than too little. You're also going to need some black epoxy dye. 
This is the one that I use. Um, I just had it around. I don't really know where you get it. I think somebody sent it to me. I don't really know honestly where it came from. So I'm gonna get these mixed up. You just wanna add a few drops. You do want it to be completely black. So make sure you add enough. Um, don't stress if you have too much epoxy. Just have a mold ready that you can do black and then paint on later is a good idea to have for it. So I'm gonna get my black mixed up. Again, I wanna make sure that I pull the molds before they're completely set so that I can bend them around the cup. So you wanna make sure that you have some super glue available. This is just the Scotch super glue. Um, it's like a dollar, but you can use any super glue. It's just super glue. So because it doesn't have any sides to keep the epoxy in, you wanna start from the middle and let it kind of work itself out and level itself out by going out to the edges that it wants. Make sure that you have a flat table. Um, I don't know if mine is flat, honestly. And then I just kind of scoop it with my stick here into the mold to get it into the areas that I want. You don't want to fill it too much because it will start going over the edge. You just want enough in there to fill up your mold. And you can't go over the sides because it's going to run down and it's going to be a waste of epoxy. You're going to have to cut that off and that's just another step that you don't want to do. So I'm just going to use my stick here to connect the two eyes with just a nice thin layer between them. And then you're going to go on. You don't even have to connect the eyes if you don't want to. I mean, it's completely up to you. Most of the time I don't, but since the mold calls for it, I'm going to go ahead and connect it and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see that it's starting to go over the side here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stick and I'm just going to kind of scoop it up with it and put it back into the container so that I don't have to cut off any later. I'm going to add a little bit more here. So that way I have a nice even eye. But like I said, there's no sides on these molds, no matter where you get them. So you just want to be conscious of what the mold is doing before you move on. So that you don't have any crazy sides going on. And the only reason that I color my epoxy black is so that I have one less step that I have to do later. So then I'm gonna gently take my mold and I'm gonna move it over to the side. Also still watching it because it's still coming over. Oop, didn't mean to kick that. Because it's still coming, it's still coming over to the side. So I'm gonna gently just wipe it off again. And once it starts to set, you won't have to watch it as much, which is nice but you just don't want that extra wispy on the side that you're gonna have to cut off because it just won't look right on the cup. So I'm just gonna use my stick. So next you wanna pull over the claws. Make sure that you're watching the eyes and what it's doing. You're gonna be kind of multitasking here because you don't want it to go over the side like I said. Um, because when I pull it, I just wanna be able to mold it onto the cup. So at this point, we are gonna have some leftover epoxy, but at this point you wanna fill up the claws here. And I'm just gonna gently pour into the claws and then kind of let it self level and then add in any more if there's not enough. I'm also gonna take this time to kind of use my stick to drag it all the way to the end claw so that it's there. I'm gonna take off all this extra so it doesn't go over. And then I'm going to move on to the next claw. Just kind of dump it in there. Dump enough in there until you think that it's going to fill itself. Then let it self level. If it doesn't quite reach that claw the way to the end, just help it. Just drag it over there a little bit. And just move on. Oh, shoot. I poured past it. <laughs> My bad. Good thing it's silicone. So that one kind of just went on to the bottom part of the silicone, so it will stay there. So if you end up with like a bulge at the end, you don't want that. So you want to take that off. This is also a super messy thing. That's why I have this down 
onto my table because my eyes over here are also drooping. So I'm gonna get off all that extra so that it's not attached to the eye. But you just, I mean, there's nothing really you can do about it. You're just gonna have to let it self level and then use something to pull it off, whether it's a stick or um, your silicone brush, that'll work too. I just have the stick here, so that's what I'm using just because it's already in my hand. Once it detaches from the eye, like how it's went onto the table there, that's not even a big deal. I will just pick it off if I can later. I just, I'm gonna pay attention to what's attached to the eye. I mean, if you don't want it on your table or whatever, then I would pick it off while it's wet or wipe it off while it's wet. But it doesn't bother me because I have something down for it, so. Also, when it's self-leveling, it's going to start to show these higher raised part of the molds. You want to make sure that you have those covered, at least with a thin layer so that it's attached, so it doesn't break when you take the mold out. Okay, so you want to pull your molds while they're still kind of like wet, almost like tacky, so that they attach to the cup really well. That's what I do anyways. Make sure that you have a towel handy that has some alcohol on it because this is a messy job, let's be honest. Also, you want to make sure that you keep your hands kind of clear of the super glue if you don't want it everywhere, but up to you again you're gonna your cup is gonna be kind of sticky so what I do is I lay the mold down on the table in front of me I add a little bit of super glue around the edges so that way it attaches and I can bend it around the cup it's okay if you don't get the super glue everywhere you just want to make sure that you have it in the area that you want I attach it to the cup and then I bend it and push onto the cup. That's why I like to do it while it's still wet. I try to keep the super glue away from my fingers as much as possible. But since the mold is still kind of wet, that makes it easier for you to mold it around your cup. And that's also why I chose a different color um, for my eyes and my claws is so that it sticks off the cup more. I think it gives it a better, unique look to it, but the acrylic paint fill in the white and the green slit, um, and then it'll be done and ready for epoxy. It'll be a 3D cup, so at least one to two layers of epoxy. I would suggest two, just to make sure that everything's protected. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, but this is what your finished cup will be once you apply your molds. All right, guys, happy crafting. <music> Thank you.